How's it going, ladies and gents? We've got a windy little day. We're here in Bachianiter, across the lovely Danube. We can see the Parliament building. One of the lone ships that traverses down the river these days. Fairly empty to boat traffic and everything else due to coronavirus. And now, let's hop across and head on into Pesh. We're gonna take the two, the M2. Doo, 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 doo. And now we've made it over the river to Kossuth Lajosztán. And here is the Hungarian Parliament from its backside. From up close, you can see the magnificent Kula Dome up there, a neo-Gothic marvel based roughly on London's Westminster, but a unique idiosyncrasicity all to itself. Completed in 1902, it was scheduled to be completed in 1896 for the 1,000 year millennial celebration of Hungary. Something that you'll see with a lot of the buildings in Budapest, Fisherman's Bastion, for example, but finally finished by architect Imre Steindl in 1902. Here we've got my good buddy, Attila Jozef, Jozef Attila. One of the best and most beloved poets in Hungarian history. As you can see by his complexion, he is a fairly depressive figure, but beautiful, beautiful, beautiful poetry nonetheless. One of his most famous poems speaks of sitting beside the Danube and reflecting on his life. See you later, Jozef. We can see the number two tram ringing its way around Kossuth Ter. Some of the other iconoclastic buildings that spread around the circumference. Oh yes, the number two tram, which traverses the entire Danube on the Pesh side. Not the entire Danube, I mean, that would go all the way to Germany, but the Danube in Budapest was voted one of the top 10 tram rides in the entire world. And you can get on it for like 350 forints, a euro. Yes, indeed. Didn't know we were going to see Zantush Janos today. One of my favorite hidden gem Hungarians. Only guy I know whose name starts with an X. Sort of like the Hungarian... Wow, completely just blinked on his name. Who wrote the origin of... Oh, Charles Darwin. Collected animals, plants, flora, fauna. Don't know who Sunyi Istvan is. <laughs> Doesn't look like he's having too good of a day, though. Well, we're here in Sabacak there. The wind has gone away since the entire square is buffeted by triumphant buildings. That over there is the American embassy. Thankfully, I've never had to show my face. I believe they actually still have a wallet of mine that I lost about two years ago. Let them keep it. I think this is George Bush. <laughs> yes, it is. The first George Bush. The better Bush. George H.W. Ronnie Reagan. Parliament in the background. Again, not my favorite president. Neither of them are. But you know, if I'm ever missing home, it's nice to see some familiar faces. And here we have the rest of Shabachak Ter. You don't really even know where to start. Shabachak Ter just has beautiful buildings on every side. Really, great place. Wonderful, peaceful, serene. Oh, okay. That was just uh, an objectively stupid and terrible idea. <laughs> Why did I do that? That was so that was so bad. So bad, so dumb. Everything wrong. Why? <laughs> Why? Here on the side of the Sandstone National Bank building, you can see some motifs to pastoral life in Hungary. The Tsurkamarha, the peasants on the Pusta. Very romanticized. And here we have made it to St. Istvan's Basilica. A more magnificent church I have not known. St. Istvan's Basilica. St. Stephen in the anglicized version, but I prefer to use the Hungarian. Beautiful old building. The scope, the scale of this building, it really just towers. I mean, Budapest, a city without skyscrapers, but a city with some tremendously tall churches. And now we cross the streets 
over into Madachter. Madachter is really the cusp of Erzsébet Varos, named for Empress Erzsébet, Sisi, as she is known throughout Hungary. One of the most beloved figures in Hungarian history. We saw her bridge yesterday on the Buddha side, and here she is in all her beautiful glory. Erzsébet Varos is another name for District 7. And this Madachter is really a great place to get a drink, hang out with friends, a lot of bars. We got Kuzpunt over there. One of my favorites, Telep. A few different spots to eat, drink, socialize. Usually on a spring day, on a summer day, you'll see people spill out of the bars into the streets. Before I started learning Hungarian, I saw this sentence and was just like, okay, that is the craziest language I've ever seen in my life. Eges sheik felje teshi pont. Eges sheik felje teshi pont. And there we have Empress Sisi, immortalized on the walls with some lovely street art. Speaking of street art, here's one of my favorite pieces in the entire city. A tribute to the 1953 victory of the magical Magyars over England. The Aran Chapat, the golden team. Hungary, although their soccer teams, football teams are not the best today, let's just say. Back in the 50s, they were beating everyone with style and aplomb. Led by their hero, Pushkas Ferenc. Frankie Pushkas. And what do we have here but a graffiti memorial to the Rubik Kotzka, the Rubik's Cube, designed, of course, by Rubik Ernu, one of the founding members of AIT. The Dohan Utsa Synagogue, largest synagogue in all of Europe. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful neo moorish design, an absolute architectural marvel in a city full of them. And it's called the Dohan Utsa Synagogue because it's on Dohan Utsa, AKA Dohani Street aka Tobacco Road. And this is the street that Bob Tomash, aka Tom Bean, and yours truly, used to live for two years together when we first moved to Budapest properly in 2018. I'm gonna go take you to our former accommodation. But first we'll make a little pit stop down Kazin Siutsa, one of the best and most beloved party streets in all of Budapest. Yeah. Yeah. Here we have Simpla Kert, probably the most famous of the Budapest ruin bars. Closed, of course. But what's not closed is Borscht Gastro Bar, a baguette and soup shop. Also incredibly famous and incredibly delicious. We've got the Barack Obama baguette here, one of their weekly specials. Never had it before. Mmm. Mmm. Najon, 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 you know. Some homemade ginger syrup. Borscht means pepper in Hungarian. And they have one of the best gigs going. Best door in the entire city, without a shadow of a doubt. Ho oh, ho, incredible. A little bit of a tourist trap these days, but back at the turn of the 20th century, the New York Cafe was where you made yourself known if you were a member of the literati, of the press, a journalist, an author. The New York Cafe was happening. They said when it was completed and they built it up, that the building was so splendid that the key must be thrown in the Danube so the doors could remain open forever. And here's a miniature little statue for said saying of throwing the key in the Danube so that the doors could stay open forever. Love this little statue. And here we have it, folks, the moment you've all been waiting for. Dohan Utsa and Yoltsvan Ketu, AKA 82 Tobacco Road. Oh, I forgot the code, but. Looks like it's still open. Tom Bean and I lived up there in that building with the green door. Beautiful gong. They call this a gong. The Hungarian 
open courtyard in the center of the buildings. Oh, I miss this place. That window right there is where my desk was and Tom's desk for that matter. And yeah, those were some of our plants. Spent a lot of time thinking, contemplating and learning to love Budapest from that apartment. Well, we're on the way to Hero Square and the Varoshli get the city park, but I nearly forgot about the Erzsébet Templom. This is a different Erzsébet, not the Erzsébet who Erzsébet Varosh is named after, kind of confusing, I know. This is for Saint Erzsébet. She was a 13th century saint and her church is terrific. All right, well, we've made it all the way over to Hero Square. Hushuk Tere. There we have the Fine Arts Museum, the Mucharnak, also an arts museum. And this is the Square of Heroes, the Square of the Hungarian Legends. It's windy as a whistle out here, but I'm gonna give a really quick walkthrough of the figures that line this beautiful square. This monument was initially constructed, or construction began rather, in 1896 on the 1,000 year anniversary of the Honfoglalash. And the Honfoglalash was when this guy at the front here, Chief Arpad, led the ancient Magyars into the Carpathian Basin along with his seven compatriots, the Magyar chieftains. Now we'll start over here with our more modern heroes. We have Kosuth Lajos, mentioned before, led the revolution of 48. Rakotzi Ferenc led his own independence revolution against the Austrians at the turn of the 18th century century, 1700s we're talking. Here we have, who is this here? Oh, Tuku Imre, actually Rakotsi Ferenc's stepfather, also led a little bit of a rebellion against the Austrians. Bethlen Gabor, the Prince of Transylvania. When Transylvania was a principality during the Tripartitum, the era of three Hungaries, you had Transylvania, you had Ottoman Hungary, and then you had Upper Hungary, which was dominated by Austria. And Bethlen Gabor, he was the preeminent statesman of Transylvania, middle of the 17th century. Bochkai Istvan, I believe, I believe, I believe he was also a leader of Transylvania. You're gonna have to double check on that. King Matyash, brave King Matyash, one of the most beloved kings in all of the Hungarian history, led the country from the middle of the 15th century until around 1490. And his father, Hunyadi Janos, never formally the king of Hungary, but the leader of Hungary before Matyash. It was an era of anarchy, civil war. Hunyadi Janos came in, stabilized the realm, and then his progeny Matyash took over. And now we'll go into the ancient past. Here we have our Angevin kings, Naj Lajos, aka Louis the Great, and his father, Karoy Robert. They dominated the 14th century. Louis the Great ruled over a Hungary that stretched to three seas, the Adriatic down in Croatia, the Baltic up in Northern Poland, and even down to the Black Sea on the edge of Romania. A little bit of a misnomer, didn't really have firm control over some of those further extremities of the realm. Nonetheless, the biggest landmass that Hungary ever had was during the Andrew era. Next, we got Negidik Bela. They call him the second founder of the country. Rebuilt Hungary after the obliteration that it suffered during the Tatyarash, the Mongolian invasion, middle of the 13th century. Ransacked, ransacked, ransacked the country. Negidik Bela came in, built his stone castles, and allowed Hungary to survive in its form until the modern day. Here we have Mashadik Andras, Andrew II. They call him Andrew of Jerusalem because he went down to Jerusalem and fought in the Crusades, beginning of the 13th century. Romanticized a lot of things about his reign, but a very illustrious king nonetheless. Past the Golden Bull, essentially the Hungarian version of the Magna Carta. Kunvish Kalman. To be honest with you, don't know too much about Kunvish Kalman. Kunvish Kalman is basically Kalman the Learned. Kalman, the book learned, because he was apparently a very wise leader. I believe he was blind. I believe he was blind. Sent Laszlo. Oh yes, Sent Laszlo, he was known as the Night King, the Herzeg Kirai, because he was the model of chivalry. Sent Laszlo was like your stereotypical athletic, tall, good looking, knightly king that we love to romanticize in early medieval Europe. And then finally, the first king of Hungary, the first Catholic king of Hungary, Sent Istvan. He used to go by the name of Voik until he was converted from his formerly pagan ways into the world of of Western Christianity by the Pope. And he really solidified the realm of Hungary. The Arpad era stretched all the way until 
Karoy Robert, the beginning of the Anjou era, and then into the modern day. But Saint Ishvan, he was the first Arpad king, the first Catholic king, and it is really thanks to him that Hungary has survived until the modern day. And those are the heroes. And just over the bridge there, we have the city park, the Vida Vunyad Castle. Never know how to pronounce that correctly. Don't know what they're setting up down there. In the winter, that's an ice skating ring. That castle, it was also built for the 1896 Millennial Exhibition. Not really as old or as authentic as it looks, but rather it combines several different architectural styles from around the ancient realm of Hungary. Pretty cool. And the park is just terrific. I mean, we don't have time to show you the whole thing, but Baroschliget City Park is just one of the best parks anywhere on earth. It must be said. The Seicheni bathhouse is there. And I miss the bath so much. Well, I hope you enjoyed that tour through Pest. A memory jogger. Of course, there's so much more to see, but so little time. So little time. Kusunam Seipen. Ich Seipnopoots.